Well, good evening and welcome to our Good Friday service. Our desire tonight is just to give you an opportunity on this Good Friday to sit in this room with us as we reflect on Jesus' death for us. A Good Friday service is always, in many ways, a somber service, a reflective service. And yet our somberness is over a few things. Our somberness is over our own personal sin. That Christ went to the cross, not just because he loved us, but because he had to go to reckon with our sinfulness. And so as we look around the world at a time like this and we are in horror at what we can see humans can do, we should be reminded tonight that the line of good and evil runs down the middle of all of us. The prophet Jeremiah said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? No matter what you think about your condition tonight, you are in profound need of God's grace and forgiveness. Good Friday has the ability, if we will allow it, to remind us that all that we are and all that we will ever be is because of God's goodness to us. We have no merit of our own. We have no good works of our own. All that is good within us is Christ in us. He is the one who has transformed our hearts. He is the one who gives us the ability to live in this moment. And he is the one on the last day will raise our bodies from the grave. The glory is to him and never to us. And so tonight, I pray in this service, our hearts and minds would be focused on that truth, that he who knew no sin became sin so that we might become the righteousness of God in Christ. Good Friday is a difficult day to think about. Good Friday in the Gospels is full of action. Good Friday is a day of intensity, a day of betrayal, a day of love, a day of sacrifice, a day of ugliness, a day of beauty, a day of pain, a day of glory. But at the heart of Good Friday is a personal God expressing his grace to us. What we're going to do tonight is we're just going to reflect on the events of this day that happened 2,000 years ago, the very moments through which the very Lamb of God, Jesus himself, took upon himself the sin of the world. Good Friday has several different parts to it, from Jesus' betrayal by Judas Iscariot to the abandonment of his disciples and the denial of Simon Peter, to the accusations hurled at Jesus from the very crowd who at one moment yelled Hosanna, now yells, crucify him, to the verdict of the mob and then Rome, to Jesus' walk to the cross, and lastly, Jesus' crucifixion and death. Tonight we're going to take each one of these moments. We're going to read Scripture so you can hear the events of this day right from the very Word of God. But after the Scriptures are read, we're going to sing a song. Sometimes you'll join in. Sometimes you'll listen. We'll direct you. But whether you're singing or listening, take the moment not just to hear the Scripture, but to meditate on it and to express your praise back to God. 
Tonight we'll offer an opportunity to pray. And I hope tonight, as the Holy Spirit leads, you may right there in your seat offer up a prayer of thankfulness, offer up a prayer of confession, offer up a prayer of intercession. Now we're leading tonight to the degree that we can, but we ask the Holy Spirit of God to lead and for Him to direct you in these moments. Our night concludes in the most fitting of ways and with the celebration of the Lord's Supper. So if you have not picked up the bread and the cup, they are available in the back and you can do so at your convenience. But let's take this opportunity and just quiet our hearts and just ask the Lord to speak to us and to reinforce the central truth of his awesome love for us and his sacrificial love for us expressed on a cross. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we ask you tonight in these moments that you would strip us of self-sufficiency, of pride, of our thoughts that we're doing it. God, to the person today who feels unworthy, who feels low, who feels unloved, God, may the cross humble the proud and raise the humble. God, tonight, would you help us? As the hymn writer said, survey the cross. God, this familiar moment in the life of Jesus, may you make it more vivid to us. And God, may tonight we appreciate at a deeper level your death for us. God, we thank you that we stand before you, not in our righteousness, but in yours. God, we thank you that even though the wages of sin is death, that the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. God, to that we are profoundly thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Thinking about the betrayal of Jesus, John 13, 21 says, When Jesus had said this, he was troubled in his spirit and testified, I assure you, one of you will betray me. The disciples started looking at one another, uncertain which one he was speaking about. One of his disciples, the one Jesus loved, was reclining close beside Jesus. Simon Peter motioned to him to find out who it was he was talking about. So he leaned back against Jesus and asked him, Lord, who is it? Jesus replied, He is the one I give the piece of bread to after I have dipped it. When he had dipped the bread, he gave it to Judas, Simon Iscariot's son. After Judas ate the piece of bread, Satan entered him. Therefore Jesus told him, What you're doing, do quickly. None of those reclining at the table knew why he told him this. Since Jesus, Judas kept the money bag, some thought that Jesus was telling him, Buy what we need for the festival, or that he should give something to the poor. After receiving the piece of bread, he went out immediately. And it was night.
Jesus was then denied. Mark 14, 27 through 31 says, Then Jesus said to them, All of you will run away, because it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. But after I have been resurrected, I will go ahead of you to Galilee. Peter told him, Even if everyone runs away, I will certainly not. I assure you, Jesus said to him, Tonight, today, this very night, before the rooster crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he kept insisting, if I have to die with you, I will never deny you. And they all said the same thing. And throughout, throughout the course, throughout the course of this evening, there'll be times we'll stand and sing, and other times while you're always invited or welcome to sing along, that uh, we'll be seated. So you can take your cue from the team. When we're seated here, then you can remain seated. And as we stand, we'd like to ask you to stand as well and sing this with us this, this evening. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, Therefore I no longer live, Jesus Christ now lives in me. Let's sing that together again. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live, Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. Let's sing that one more time together. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. I am crucified with Christ, therefore I no longer live. Jesus Christ now lives in me. And won't you be seated? Jesus now hates Jesus. Luke 22, 52, and 53. Then Jesus said to the chief priest, the temple police, and the elders who had come for him, have you come out with swords and clubs as if I were a criminal? Every day while I was with you in the temple complex, you never laid a hand on me, but this is your hour and the dominion of darkness. When daylight came, the elders of the people, both the chief priest and the scribes, convened and brought him before the Sanhedrin. But they kept insisting, he stirs up the people, teaching throughout all Judea, from Galilee, where he started, even to here.
Jesus suffers, Matthew 27, 15 through 26. At the festival, the governor's custom was to release to the crowd a prisoner they wanted. At that time, they had a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered together, Pilate said to them, 
Who is it you want me to release for you? Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Messiah? For he knew that he had handed him over because of envy. While he was sitting on the judge's bench, his wife sent word to him, Have nothing to do with this righteous man, for today I've suffered terribly in a dream because of him. The chief priest and the elders, however, persuaded the crowds to ask for Barabbas and to execute Jesus. The governor asked them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? Barabbas, they answered. Pilate asked them, What should I do then with Jesus who is called Messiah? They all answered, Crucify him. Then he said, Why? What has he done wrong? But they kept shouting, Crucify him all the more. When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere, but a riot was starting instead, he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd, and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourselves. All the people answered, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them. After having Jesus flogged, he handed him over to be crucified. As we consider the cross, the love of God expressed on the cross in Jesus Christ and our response to that love. When I survey the me 
wonderful cross. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, the wonderful cross. Bids me come and die and find that I may truly live. Oh, the wonderful cross. Oh, out love so amazing the words of the crucifixion and death of Jesus. Mark 15, 21 through 39. They forced a man coming in from the country who was passing by to carry Jesus' cross. He was Simon, a Cyrenian, the father of Alexander and Rufus. And they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means skull place. They tried to give him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his clothes, casting lots for them to decide what each would get. Now it was nine in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge was written against him was the king of the Jews. They crucified two criminals with him, one on his right and one on his left. So the scripture was fulfilled that says, and he was counted among the outlaws. Those who passed by were yelling insults at him, shaking their heads and saying, Ha! The one who would demolish the sanctuary and build it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. In the same way, the chief priests and the scribes were mocking him to one another and saying, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Messiah, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross so that we may see and believe. Even those who were crucified with him were taunting him. When it was noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of those standing there heard this, they said, Look, he's calling for Elijah. Someone ran and filled a sponge with sour wine, fixed it on a reed, offered him a drink, and said, Let's see if Elijah comes to take him down. But Jesus let out a loud cry and breathed his last. Then the curtain of the sanctuary was split in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who was standing opposite of him saw the way he breathed his last, he said, this man really was God's son. Savior 
It's fitting tonight that we conclude our night with a celebration of the Lord's Supper, but I want to do something tonight to give us just an opportunity. We've heard the scripture read and we've lifted our songs in praise, and I'm going to read some scripture here in a moment about the Lord's Supper, but after I read this scripture, we're going to enter into a season of prayer. The Bible says that when we partake of the Lord's table, that this gives us an opportunity to examine ourselves. And what appropriate time to examine ourselves 
in light of who Jesus is than tonight. And so I'm going to read the scripture. And then after I read the scripture, right there where you are, why don't you just, from your heart to God's heart, you may be moved. If you need to take a few moments, you can kneel right there at your chair. You can sit right where you are. But have the Lord lead you. Before we partake of the Lord's table, why don't we take a moment of quiet prayer and examination to just say, Spirit of the living God, come meet with me. Search me, O God, and you know my heart. You see, God, if there's any wicked way in me. Before the events that had transpired that we have been talking about, Jesus took his disciples to the quietness of the upper room. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread, blessed and broke it, gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. Then he took a cup and after giving thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood that establishes the covenant. It is shed for many for the forgiveness of sins. But I tell you from this moment, I will not drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it in a new way in my Father's kingdom with you. In a few moments, when we partake in the Lord's Supper, you are welcome to partake in the Lord's Supper with us tonight if you are a Christian. If you are here tonight and you have never accepted Jesus' death for you, then I don't invite you to partake of the Lord's table. I invite you to accept Jesus. You say, what does it take for a man to be made right with God? Not his works. The grace of God and the humble heart who says, God, I cannot. God, I am a sinner. By faith, I trust in you. If you're here tonight and you're not a Christian, please do not leave this place tonight a non-Christian. Trust Jesus. If you are a Christian, you are welcome at the table. But we're now going to take a few moments of silent prayer. I'll conclude our time of silent prayer with a prayer, and then we will, will partake of the bread and the cup. But right there where you are, from your heart to God's heart, just take some time to talk to the Lord.
Well, Heavenly Father, we thank you for the body that was broken and the blood that was spilled out for us. We come here tonight remembering your death. God, remembering that we had to die, that you had to die because of all the sin that we had committed. God, with thankful hearts tonight, we just express to you our thanksgiving. And God, with humble hearts tonight, we express to you our continual need for you to be with us, to forgive us, to empower us, to sustain us. And God, on this Good Friday, God, with all that we can say in our heart, we say thank you. God, we thank you that you have left us a reminder of your death. God, may we remember it. And may tonight we have remembered it in a deeper way than maybe ever before. We thank you for these moments, these holy moments, these moments we can just get alone with you and you can get alone with us and communicate to our hearts. God, we thank you. In Jesus' name, amen. We now can partake of the Lord's Supper. Bible said, after they celebrated the Lord's Supper, they sang a hymn before they went to the Mount of Olives. Let's use this opportunity, not just in soberness, but in thankfulness, to stand and sing this final song as our, our words of celebration in closing tonight as we thank the Lord for what he has done for us.
That is the good news of the gospel. God bless you all. Have a wonderful weekend. We will see you either tomorrow or Sunday.